What's up, I'm Ejem and welcome back to my channel. The terms pure function and side effects get tossed around a lot in the world of JavaScript. And given that these terms are prevalent in the JavaScript ecosystem and pretty important to understand, chances are you've come across these terms and wondered to yourself, what are even pure functions and side effects? So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through these terms by defining what they are and why they're important to understand. I'm also gonna be showing code block examples throughout this video to help further establish your working knowledge of pure functions and side effects. So by the end of this video, you should be able to tell the difference between a regular function and a pure function. On top of that, you should understand what side effects are and why you should avoid producing them in many different situations. So let's first take a look at what a pure function is. A function in JavaScript that's considered to be a pure function has to have the following two properties. The first is that the function given the same input will always return the same output. And the second property is that the function doesn't produce any side effects. Later in this video, we'll take a closer look at what side effects are. But before that, let's take a look at the first property of a pure function, which is given the same input, you should always get the same output. Pure functions have one-to-one -one mapping or connections between its inputs and its outputs. This means for every unique input, there's a corresponding output. So to further understand what this looks like, let's look at a code block. So I have my method custom greetings, which takes in the name argument and returns out my custom greedy howdy name. So the great thing about this function is that the output is pretty easy to predict. For the same name that you give it, you'll get the same greeting returned. So here I create a constant called greeting where I call custom greeting and pass in my own name. And then I print out my greeting constant and I get howdy Gemma. So no matter how this method is called or consumed, you can always expect to get the same output if you give it the same input. So here in a different case, I have an array called names. Right below it, I have another variable called name greetings, which is assigned the return value for my names map function, where I pass in my custom greeting callback, which will get called on each element in my array. So when I print out name greetings, I get a new array where I have my greetings for each person in my names array. Pure functions allow you to have the expectation that given the same input, you should have the same output. This makes your code a lot more readable since it's easy to see the mapping between your inputs and your outputs. This is also great for memoization or caching since you can predict the output if you have the same input. So instead of calling your pure function every single time you have the same input, you can save your output in some location and then grab that output whenever you need it. By taking advantage of this, you can really optimize your applications. All right, so now that we understand the idea of same input and same output, let's take a closer look at what side effects are. The term side effect in JavaScript refers to the concept of a function that can alter external state of your application. This means that a function can alter parts or values of your application that don't directly reside inside of that same method. So there are two common cases where a function can produce a side effect. So the first is where a function can go to its outer scope and directly alter the values of those outer variables. And then the second case is where the function can directly mutate or alter the value of its provided argument. And I'll show you two separate cases. So let me show you the first case where a function can mutate a variable in an outer scope. So I have an object named show that has some basic information about one of my favorite TV shows, One Piece. Beneath that object, I have a method named watch next episode, which will increment the current episode number every time that it gets called. This method produces a side effect since it relies on the outside existence of my show object. Specifically, it's changing the value of current episode in my show object, even though show isn't inside watch next episode. Typically when you see a side effect, you'll probably see something like this happening. So now that we have that, let me show you the second type of side effect where a function can directly alter its argument that's being passed in. So I have an array called comedies, which has an array of some of my favorite comedies. And then I have a method called pen show, which takes in an array shows, and then a second argument called new show, which is the new show that I want to append to my shows array. Inside of pen show, I push my new show to my shows array, and then I return that array. So this might not be as clear as our last example, but a pen show is still producing a side effect. Arguments of methods are actually references to their original value. That means if you attempt to change the value of your reference, which is passed into your method, you're actually changing the value of your original variable. So back inside our code block, inside a pen show, I push the new show string on the show's array, which is a reference to the outside comedies array. So we're actually changing the original value of comedies. So I create a new array called shows, which is the return value from our pen show method. If I print out shows, I get the office, parks and rec, community and 30 rock, which is all nice. But if I print out comedies, I get the same four shows in the array. 
To me, including 30 Rock in the comedies array is something that's unexpected given the scope of your method. When I look at the method of Penn show, I don't assume that the original array that I pass into the method is gonna be altered. So you could imagine why a lot of people would want to avoid side effects. It's not the worst in very simple or straightforward applications, but the second you start dealing with more complex applications, you have more intricate state management, or you're dealing with outside variables, you don't want to have your objects or arrays or strings mutated unexpectedly. So the easiest thing that you can do to avoid producing side effects is to create new state inside the scope of your method. So let's take a look at a code block that avoids producing a side effect. So again, with our append show method, we take in shows and new show, but instead of pushing directly to our argument shows, we generate a whole new array where we take the original strings in our shows array, and then we append new show, and then we return that new array. So if we call append show and assign it to our new shows array and we print it out, we'll see that we have the office, parks and rec, community, and 30 rock. And right after that, if we print out comedies, we can see that we still have the same three original shows in our array without changing the original state. So now that you have a solid understanding of what pure functions are, I'm gonna put your newfound knowledge to the test. So I'm gonna show you some methods and you determine whether or not they're pure functions. So in this code block, I have a variable called company name, which is just a string. And then I have my method get introduction, which takes in the argument name. So in this code block, get introduction is a pure function. For each unique input, you get a unique output, which is your name. Even though get introduction points to an outside variable, which in our case is company name, it's not altering the state, so it's not producing any side effect. So let's try another code block. So this one's a little bit longer, so take your time with this. But essentially what I'm doing here is I create two constant variables, one's a string and one's an array. I create a new method called add member, which takes in three arguments. And then I call that method three times. Right below those three function calls, I create another method called create family, which takes in two arguments. And then at the end, I make the call to my create family method. So for our add member method, we're dealing with a function that is not pure. Here we can see that it takes in the family argument, and then inside the method, we actually push directly to that array, which is altering external state. And we do that three separate times. You can actually see that we're not taking advantage of the returned family variable, since we can just directly call to our family members array, and we know that our original array is getting altered. The create family method, on the other hand, is a pure function. It generates a completely new object with the given arguments. It doesn't rely on altering any external state. Pure functions and side effects might be really obvious in some cases to identify, while in others, not so much. So just like with everything else in your journey of learning JavaScript, it's gonna take some time for you to train your eye to identify what a pure function looks like or what a side effect looks like. But I hope this video was a great starting point for your understanding of pure functions and side effects. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about a variety of different things. You can go follow me, send me a DM, and we can have a chat. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next one.